Um, before I start external examination of the body, I just need to tell you that I got body from the hospital. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. He had a medical, uh, we call artifacts. He had a tube inside of his oral cavity, just helping to breathe. He had two IV lines, intravascular access, but uh, it was um, inserted in his, his bones. And um, he had a multiple surgical packing material saturated with the blood, and I observed the body on my table. There was some blood present on his body, and I observed uh, sharp wounds injury to his left chest. Um, did you take photographs uh, during your external examination of Isaac's body? Yes, I did I tend to take, you know, many photographs. All right. Um, Did you complete an internal examination of Isaac's body? Yes. And is that part of the usual autopsy procedure? Yes, you are correct. Um, can you summarize the results of your internal examination of Isaac's body? Sure. Um, as I said, I observe, most important, I observe sharp with injury to his left chest. Later, I classified this wound as a stab wound. Stab wound, it's, um, it's, um, Basically, it's a sharp force injury. Stab wound when, when its depth of the wound exceeds the length of the wound on the skin. So it was stab wound to the left chest. The stab wound penetrated to his um, left chest cavity. Uh, he had a damage, I call it sharp force injury to, the, to his fifth and sixth ribs on the left chest cavity. Um, then wound kind of continues and go to the left lung, I was able to identify it, uh, sharp force injury to the lower lobe of the left lung. He had a blood in his last, uh, left chest cavity. I recovered 200 cubic centimeters. It's approximately in glass of the blood in his left chest cavity. And um, he had damage, sharp force injury to his pericardium. Pericardium, it's a coverage kind of like sac around his heart. And he had a sharp force injury to the apex of the heart. The apex, it's a pointy part of the heart, like uh, they had a damage, uh, sharp force injury to the uh, left ventricle of the heart. And uh, he had a condition, and I identified this condition on the x-ray I performed before autopsy. He had a condition called pneumothorax. Pneumothorax is present of the um, air in the chest cavity. So two condition, pneumothorax, air, and the hemothorax present on the blood. And his organs, midline organs, was kind of shifted to the right. It's called deviation to the right. It's because it's collection of the uh, air in the left chest cavity. Was um, Isaac Schumann wearing anything else other than this, this one trunks when you received his body? No. Page two, can you tell us what that is? Uh, page two, that's an uh, image of the body taken from the left side. So the gentleman that's on my table, I took this photograph, he covered by uh, medical, uh, just basically hospital type of sheath. His uh, hands covered by brown bags. Why are his hands covered, if you know? Uh, this is part of the uh, requirement. Uh, in cases, for suspicious cases, we ask law enforcement or medical personnel cover hands with bag to protect trace evidence because we have to collect trace evidence at the time of the autopsy. So it's part of the standard procedure. All right, page three, what does that show? I hope we're not the same page. Uh, I believe this is, um, when I took a bag from his hands, this is image of the uh, wrist uh, left wrist, and uh, I just document that he had a, it's my name tag, and it's a um, hospital number. He was ID by hospital number, and he had a golden collar chain or bracelet on his uh, left wrist. Uh, did, when, when his body came to you, did he have that, that bracelet on? Yes, actually, I recovered later. It was uh, uh, because his hands were a bag, but he had a bracelet, yes. That's a, 
uh, image of the left chest when I remove his skin from the left chest. I observed that he had a sharp force injury to two ribs. So two ribs was completely kind of like transected. Uh, so weapon went through his rib cage. Uh, just want to show you that that's uh, damage of the two ribs. I make sure I understand you, Dr. Froloff. When you say that his ribs were transected, what do you mean by that? It's a sharp post injury to the ribs. And what was the damage to the ribs? It's completely cut. Well, I can say cut off. How many ribs were completely cut? Two. Um, and again, just to summarize, your opinion is um, he died due, a, due to a penetrating stab wound to his left chest, correct? Um, in the final report, I said exsanguination, basically bleeding to the death, to the stab wound to the left chest, you're correct. Um, medical examiners, even assistant medical examiners, there's a, is there a board certification process for that position? It's some, it depends on which field, yes. Okay, in your field, there's a board certification process, sir? Yes. Are you board certified? I'm a diplomat of the American Board of Medical Legal Death Investigators. Are you board certified for, as a medical examiner? There is no board certification for medical examiners, board certification for forensic pathology. The, um, you talked about um, manner of death and cause of death, is that right? Yes. And I think, just so we know, again, just cause of death is stab wound to the left chest. In you, simple terms, correct? You are correct, yes. And then the manner is, as you said, how that cause came to be. Agreed? Yes. And that's a medical term, correct? Um, it's a forensic, forensic term, yes. A forensic medical term, correct? Sure. It's not a legal term, correct? It's not a legal term, no. And the cause of death, there are essentially, you have four options, five options? No, for manner of the death, we have, yes, for cause of death, it's indefinite, you know, for manner of the death, we have limited options, yes. Absolutely. So manner of death, there's limited options, only five? Uh, we have, we can choose from the natural death, accidental death, suicidal death, homicidal death, and if I cannot determine, I can say it's undetermined death, you're correct. So there is no determination f that you can make, that you're qualified to do, as to whether or not the homicide occurred as a result of self-defense. Agreed? Oh, I never testified that the self-defense or as an issue homicide, basically, from forensic point of view, it's uh, meaning life taken by another person. Sure. And again, that's outside of your field, whether it's self-defense. Agreed? Yes, I never testified about self-defense, yes. Okay. In this situation, you um, examined Isaac Schumann's body, and part of that was the toxicology. Is that right? Yes. And you determined that his blood alcohol concentration was 0 0.219. Agreed? It's not me. It's a lab. A lab that you rely on in, you, uh, in your work, correct? Yes. So based upon your relying on that lab, you agree his blood alcohol concentration was 0.219. That's correct. And the, you're aware that the legal limit for adults permitted to drink alcohol is 0 0.08, correct? Uh, in the state of Wisconsin, driving legal limit, it's 0 0.08, you're correct. So this would be over two and a half times the legal limit, correct? Yes. Now, you talked about the, the wound and you described that. Agreed? Yes. Um, the manner in which somebody would receive a stab wound is a dynamic process. You agree? You're correct, yes. There would be, uh, you're not here to tell anybody about the amount of force that was used to cause that wound. Agreed? It's usually hard to determine force in the cases like that, yes. And part of the reason that it's hard to determine is because the process is so dynamic, correct? 
Oh, it's not just dynamic, it's uh, nature of the weapon and so on and so on. And at least part of it, and I understand there might be more complications, part of it is, is that it might be one object going into another object, it might be two objects moving towards each other, correct? Those are at least two of the possible dynamics involved. If you mean objects, it's a humans, right? Correct, and people, I apologize. People. A, a person and, and, person. and uh, the knife. You're absolutely right, I apologize. You agree? It's a dynamic process, yes. And so part of that to try to measure, if one was to try to think about that force, you'd have to know whether the person who's receiving that wound in what direction they're moving, correct? It's again, it's so many things you need to Absolutely. consider. Yes. You would agree though, if the person receiving the wound is moving towards the knife, that's gonna impact how the injury occurs, agreed? Yes. If the person receiving the wound is reaching out, that's gonna impact the wound that is received. You know, I can't speculate because, you know, it's, it's possibility, but again, I'm here to express opinion about the cause and matters of this, and uh, I never, you know, observed this incident. Uh, sure, sure, but again, it, it, it's really hard to tell what happened because I don't know what happened exactly. I understand, but you were here to say a certain depth of the wound, and that was something that you pointed out to the jury, correct? Uh, depth of the wound, it's easy to measure, and Absolutely. it's uh, objective kind of things. Sure. So you would agree, though, it's fair for me to ask you questions about how it may have came to be that the wound became that deep. That's a fair question. You agree? Sure. Okay. So let's talk about that. Are you fine with that? Uh, until, you know, some points, yes. Yeah. And so that may have occurred if a body is moving towards that knife, that's going to impact the depth of the wound. Agreed? Yes. If a, and if a six foot one, 130 pound, 34 person is moving towards into that knife, that might make it the knife go deeper, correct? It's again, I can't predict how deep exactly, but it's possibility, yes. Sure. And certainly if that person, six foot, 134 pounds, is falling forward, so all their weight is going forward onto that knife, that's gonna impact the force as well, correct? That's a possibility, yes.